Hello and uh, welcome to your first video tutorial for the uh, Research Design and Statistics module. So um, just to let you know, the idea behind these video tutorials is to run through, complement each of the weekly practicals and run through what you need to do in SPSS for each of the practicals and then how to interpret what you get out of it. So I'm assuming very little knowledge of SPSS for these videos. So if you haven't used SPSS for a while, or you haven't used it very much in the past, then that shouldn't be a problem. We'll run through what exactly what you need to do. So we'll start off today just with uh, the very basics of simply how to transfer your data into an SPSS file and then run some basic checks on the data. So this week's practical, you've got some data which is based on uh, the males and females. So the males and females were told by the partner that they'd been cheating on them. And then they recorded how many times they shot a picture of their partner's face versus a picture of their own face. Um, so this data I've got here, it's based on the same variables that you've got, but it is different data. So you will have to run this on your own data, otherwise you're gonna get the wrong answers. So what I've done is I've put this data into an Excel file here. So we've got, this is exactly the same format that you'll have on your practical data. And then we need to transfer this data into SPSS. So if we click on SPSS, we'll go into this, then one thing about SPSS you'll need to know is that you've got two views here down in the bottom left. You've got the data view and the variable view. So if you click on variable view, then this allows you to uh, type the names of your variables into SPSS and also give a little bit of information about what the variables represent. So if we do that, for our data, so we've got males and females, which we want to code in a gender variable. So we can put that in there. Then we've got the number of times that the person shot a picture of the partner's face. So we can code that as partner face or something like that. And then the number of times that they shot their own face, which we'll code as own face. So then we want to give a little bit of information about what these variables represent. So they're all numeric variables. We can get rid of decimal places just to make the data set a bit tidier. And then we also need to specify what type of measure, if you click on the measure box here, what type of measure it is in terms of whether it's scale, ordinal, or nominal. So the gender is a categorical variable, so you wanna put that as nominal. And then the other two will class as scale variables because they're on a continuous scale. So you'll also want to, for your own sake, because it just makes it a bit easier when you're doing the analysis, uh, just type some values in for how you're going to code this gender variable. So you could put one, and it's completely arbitrary what kind of coding you use, but we'll put one as male and two as female. So we'll add those, click on OK. And then the data set is pretty much set up then. So we can get on, if you click on back into data view, you can then get on to putting the data into SPSS. So I'm gonna just cheat and copy and paste it from the Excel file. This is fine if you've got small data sets. If you've got larger data sets, it can become a bit unwieldy. So what you might want to do is use the options. You go into open and open database, oh, open data then what SPSS allows you to do now is to ex um, export data directly from Excel. So you can do that, but it does need to be in the right format from the Excel file before you enter it into SPSS. So if we go back into Excel, 
then the first thing we need to do is code this gender variable because at the moment we've got males here and females here and this is unsuitable for SPSS because in SPSS each participant uh, is represented by one row so you can't have males and females on the same row so we'll go back into SPSS there's 14 male participants and 14 female participants so what we can do is just code this as gender one for male and then again you can cheat by just copying that and pasting it for the rest of the 14 rows and then do the same for female which is represented by two copy that and then paste those in so now we can enter the partner face and the own face data in so we just need to be a little bit careful about that this is going in the right boxes but you can see that partner face and own face represented here we can take this data from excel copy and copy that and then paste that into spss so that then each male now is represented just by one line and we've got both the variables for partner face and own face in there and then you can do the same with females copy that and then paste that over and then the data is ready to go then so once you've got the data into SPSS, when you're running pretty much any kind of analysis, one of the first things you want to do is just have a look at what the data looks like visually. Uh, so is it normally distributed or is it is there any indications of skewness in the data? Um, or is there any indication of any outliers or does it just look a bit odd? That's uh, quite, an, quite often you'll get data which just looks a bit crazy. So you just want to check on this. So we can do this now by going into graphs and then click on chart builder. And then you can ignore this as long as you've entered the correct levels of measurement. I'll just bring this over here. So this is chart builder and you'll use this uh, for any kind of visual uh, representation of your data that you might want to use. So bar charts, line graphs, uh, histograms, box plots, they're all covered under this chart builder. So we'll start off by doing a histogram. So if you go down in this box to click on histogram, take this first box here and drag it up into this area. And then we'll look first of all at partner face. So click on that one and then just drag that put that into the x-axis you don't need to put anything into this y-axis for a histogram go over to this second box and just click on display normal curve and then click on apply here and then we can just compare what we've got to an actual normal distribution and then click on ok and it should bring up your histogram so you can see here that the data, it looks a little bit messy, but it's approximately normally distributed. We've got uh, this bar here, which is much higher than what we'd expect. We've got a few uh, data points around the tails here that are more than we'd expect, but otherwise it looks okay. So that was the histogram, and then another thing you can look at is the box plot. So box plots are often used for non-parametric data as a visual representation of the data, but they can also be used with parametric data to have a look at what kind of distribution you've got in your data. And it also handily shows you any outliers in the data as well. So it will uh, pick those out for you. So if you go back into graphs and chart builder, and then this time we want this box down here, box plot. And then we're just taking this first one, simple box plot. And we're moving that into this box here. Now, what we can do now is separate uh, these by males and females. So we can look at the two 
group separately. So to do that, if you move gender down to the x-axis, and then we'll just look at the partner face variable again. So if you move that over to the y-axis, then click on OK, and then it'll bring up your box plot. So once you've got the box plot up, then we can see here that we've got two separate plots for males and females. So the females show a much more standard distribution. So we've got the median score here, and then the interquartile range here, and then the total range or total expected range here. Uh, for males, we've got a much more bunched up distribution, but you can also see that there's two outliers here that have been uh, identified, case number eight and case number 13. So we know then that there's two data points within the male data set which would be considered outliers. So we've looked there at histograms and box plots as ways of visually representing your data and ways that you can have a look at whether there's any outliers in the data and check for the shape of the distribution in the data as well. Now, there are also statistical techniques that you can use to check for normality too. So you could use the skewness and kurtosis statistics if you wanted to. And if you go into the Andy Field book, he'll, he'll explain in there how to interpret those statistics. But for this practical, we're going to use the, Col bear with me on this one, kolmogorov smirnov test of normality. And this is a test which gives you a level of significance which you can use for interpretation as well. So if you go into the analyze menu here, go to descriptive statistics and go down to explore, then what we can do is we can put the two variables that we want to look at, partner face and own face, into the dependent list box. And then we can also split these again by gender. So if you move gender over to the factor list, then it'll conduct separate tests for males and females then. Then if you go click on plots, and then go over to normality plots with tests here, then this will give you your Kolmogorov Smirnov test and also the Shapiro Wilkes test as well. So click on continue and then click on OK. Wait for all of this to load up and then try and find the relevant table. OK, here we go. So in the explore menu, you can see it gives you loads of stuff, a lot of which you don't really need to worry about. But it also gives you a range of descriptive statistics for your data as well. So we've got separate data here for males and females. For the partner face and for own face, you can see it also gives you skewness and kurtosis statistics as well. And then if you scroll down further, you've got the tests of normality here. And you can see that the kolmogorov smirnov test is the first one reported. So when you're using this test, you're looking for a non-significant result. So if it's non-significant, it basically means that there's, um, you can assume that your data is normally distributed. If it's significant, then th this means that the data that you've got deviate significantly from a normal distribution. So in this case, what you want to have is a non-significant finding. So for males and females, we have got non-significant findings here for both partner face and for own face. So all in all, we could assume from that that the data is roughly normally distributed, so it would be suitable for parametric tests. Now, one word of warning about this and I'd advise as well looking in the Andy Field book about this, is that these tests of normality aren't ideal and it's very dependent on the sample size you've got. So if you've got a massive sample size, then what you'll find is these tests of normality often come out as significant, even though visually your data can look very normally distributed. And conversely, if you've got a very small sample size, 
then these may show up as non-significant purely because there's a lack of power in the test to detect a significant effect, even though actually when you look at your data, it might look quite substantially non-normal. So when you're determining normality, it's very much a matter of interpretation. There's no hard and fast rule about what is normally distributed data and what isn't. And again, I'd very much advise reading up on this in the Andy Field book um, about when it's suitable to use these tests and when it's probably not so suitable. So that's the end of the video for this practical. So hopefully the, this will make running practical one much more straightforward. And then next week we'll go on to looking at more descriptive statistics and how to visually represent descriptive statistics as well. So just finish off by saying that next week we'll be looking at the chart builder again to generate graphs. And then for weeks after that, we'll be more focusing on uh, techniques which are under this analyze box. And this is when we get into the statistical tests that we're going to run on the data. So that's when things get really interesting. But uh, hopefully, yep, that's helped. And I will see you next week.